There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world. Of course, I am Jay Campbell, and you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with a mate all the way across the pond by the name of Brian Keen. Brian, what is up, my brother? How are you? Jay, I am fantastic. Absolutely delighted and blessed to be here. So really looking forward to chatting. And I am delighted and blessed that you are here. And you guys and gals watching this show, Brian is a man of massive energy and vibration. And this is going to be an epic show, 100%. Uh, but for his bio, for those of you who don't know him, and a lot of people do know him in the UK, he's a three-time best-selling author, online fitness coach, certified nutritionist, host of the Brian Keen podcast, and a man who has very much familiarity with entheogens and plant medicine and the toad and all the other things that we might be talking about today on this podcast. But let me just ask you, and again, for everybody watching today is July 3rd, 2024, which bro, that's insane. We're literally more than halfway through the year. Ow. It's crazy how time is flying. Um, I've been asking a lot of people um, when they come on the Jay Campbell podcast, um, a very important question. And again, I just started doing this in the last couple of months as I've been interviewing folks. And it's, are you a buyer of humanity or a seller of humanity in the next three to five to 10 years? Oh, it's an interesting question. I'm going to come at it from a slightly different angle because I live my entire life off the principle of try and make the world a better place because I sure. had a human experience through it. Um, so I think as long as I'm able to contribute to raising consciousness, raising awareness, making people's lives better because I'm able to share my message or share potential ideas that could help them, I think I'm moving in the right direction with it. Awesome, man. I mean, that's a very, very succinct and short answer. And honestly, I'm like you. I'm a glass half helpless pool guy. Um, we create our reality, right? We're nothing more than our thoughts anyway. Mm -hmm. But, you know, obviously there's a lot of um, dissonance. There's a lot of incoherence, um, you know, in, on the planet right now. There's a lot of people that are, you know, I, I keep this map of consciousness behind me from Dr. Hawkins because I like to refer to it often. But there's a lot of people walking around who are literally um, not capable of taking ownership or being accountable for their lives, right? And obviously the media, sensationalism, the narrative, blah, 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 social media, you know, they love to tell people it's not their fault, you know? And so then they walk around and they're like, oh, it's not my fault. You know, and little kids, you know, I've got, you've got a nine-year-old, obviously I've got a 16 and 14 year old girls. And it's like a battle to teach them that what they see on TikTok or Instagram, and obviously you have to regulate that, but you can't beep it. No, no parent today can keep their children completely away from that because then they wouldn't be able to go to school, right? Because it's kind of part and parcel. It's integrative to the process, but you can regulate their content. You can regulate their consumption and their time spent. But it's just, it's crazy how much the narrative, let's just call it that, of social media is victimized. It's and very, that's what it teaches our children, dude. It does. It's very interesting, Jay. And sorry to cut across, but just sure. I'm playing one of the longest games with my daughter. Sure. When she turned two, I used to post her on my social media channels. And a few weird things happened kind of out of context. People started stopping her on the street when she was with my mother or with her mother. Sure. I'm recognizing her from my channels. Sure. And one of the long games I played with my daughter, Holly, who's nine, turned nine last month or actually the month before in May, is she is nowhere on my social media, nowhere on my Instagram, nowhere on my TikTok, nowhere on my Facebook. And I've got about half a million followers across all the channels. And awesome. par part of the reason for that is when she looks at Instagram, and she looks at my page, I go, you're the most important person in my entire life. And you're not on my channels. This isn't real life. And I'm trying to play a long game with her for that so that when she's 14, 15, 16, she's going to intuitively know that. That's genius, bro. I love that. And, and you know, by the way, I, my daughters, and I've never consciously, intentionally have done this, but my daughters are, no, there's nothing on my social media pages of either of them either. I mean, they have their own pages at 16 to 14. I mean, they're, they're, they're very much anonymous, but you know, they'll like, they'll like stuff, but 
same thing, nothing. Now my wife, you know, will post cause she's a Facebook person, you know, she'll post family photos and you know, because women do that. Right. Yeah. But like I'm the exact same way, dude, there's zero involvement of my children on my social media. There's absolutely zero. So that's, we're both very smart because you're absolutely right. 100% it is literally holographic. It is, it is make believe. And yes, people like us, we use it for business purposes to catch, you know, to motivate people, to coach people, whatever it is we do, teach, learn. But at the same time, there it, it is. I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm not even on it, man. Like, you know, people like you, other influencers and stuff, you know, will message me on social media channels. And I have a team, two teams actually, and I'm never there. And, you know, I've got, of course, many chat and all these little, you know, programs set up too to send people up content and all that stuff for free. But it's like, people were always like, dude, I'll message you and you never respond. And you're like, you don't understand. Like, I'm not there. Like, if I was there, how could I be me? How, mm -hmm. how could I be creating? <laughs> you know yeah. It's such a, an interesting dichotomy and kind of nearly a paradox of life that we think and everything gets wrapped up into this world and people think it's reality when it actually it's just a highlight reel. And I'm also not saying for people listening, if you want to post your children, post your son, your daughter, sure. your family, it's totally fine. It's a decision I've made. I might be wrong. Fast forward 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, right. maybe it doesn't pan out, but it's a decision I made several years ago that I think this is going to be a better long game for her. But that relationship, and as you know, from plant-based medicines, becoming more spiritual, becoming more conscious, you start to see that it's just, it's noise. It's so much noise compared to what the signal is of becoming your authentic self, tuning in with that. What's your mission? Who are you serving? How are you making the planet better? How are you helping the planet? How are you helping the people on this planet move through the difficulties and things that they're struggling with? And social media can be a great conduit or vehicle for that. But the danger is really in the dose because you can get sucked into it, obsessed with it, and then you can end up losing all of the thing that actually makes you you. And I think that's the main thing to be mindful of. Beautiful, man. I'm going to move this because my clipping team is constantly telling me, you know, if you were to set up more faces, we could use everybody. So anyway, I'm switching you over. Bro, I mean, obviously we speak the same language. Um, I'll just say flat out, I mean, you're not going to be proven wrong because it's toxic. Um, there's very little value in social media from other than the message and the learning that's put out there. Because again, as you said, it's it's holographic. People, they they edit their comments you don't even see what's real. And the worst part about it, and, and you know, we're not going to stay on this for this whole show because you have a lot of amazing stuff to, to dive into. But um, the worst part about it is it literally teaches our young children to compare. And as you know, comparison is the thief of all joy. So it's like when you're comparing yourself to other holographic creatures, especially like, you know, the high level celebrities and the, you know, the models and stuff that are all like holographic faces and using all sorts of filters and blushes and all this insane stuff. It's, it, it, it gives our younger kids, you call them children. It's not just girls, it's boys and girls, uh, a, a totally like imperfect version of reality. And then they're comparing themselves to that. And as you and I both know, brothers, none of it is true. Not, not even a bit of it is true. I think psychologists call it the vertical expansion of our social group, that this is the first time in recent memory where we have access to all these other holographic people comparing yeah. ourselves against celebrities, against people who are living the other side of the world, the other side of the planet. And what's very interesting about comparison, I did a post on this that went quite viral recently on Instagram, is we always compare up with comparison, right. which is so funny because Crazy. one of the things I get people to do is I'm like, okay, if you insist on playing this hamster wheel of comparison, that's just making you miserable for every person you compare up, compare against three or four people who are behind you on that same journey. And it at least balance out and kind of allow you to, you know, Naval Ravikant says, if you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Like at least you can balance it out so that you're able to feel like, okay, there's actually people behind me on the weight loss journey, on the business journey, on the financial journey, not just always looking ahead. And I think that brings a little bit of equilibrium or harmony to it at least. Beautiful, man. You are a man of not many words, but elegance when you speak. I mean, I'm, I mean that. I mean, like you're very, very good at getting your message across in a short amount of time. It's amazing, which is why you're, why you're Brian Keith. Thank you, brother. Uh, right, let's <laughs> talk about that loss, man. Um, I know we're going to get into some spirituality and probably talk about the theogens and use our experiences and stuff at some point in the show because we probably have beaten all these topics to death. But I mean, bro, let's just be honest, right? Like we were talking off air, 70% of the West. And when I say 70%, the statistics are truly 44% of all adults um, are obese in the West. And, I, and the West, I would define as probably the UK now, probably the Eurozone, Canada, the United States. 
And we know what the reasons are for, you know, obviously the nutritions and the dietary people will say, oh, it's because of the uh, four food groups and, you know, people are eating too many carbohydrates and not moving enough. But you and I also know that it's due to the environmental desecration of our endocrine systems, all of our biological systems. But, you know, what, what, what people don't realize is, and obviously I know you're like me, you travel a lot. Like when you go to an airport and you really look at the numbers, I would say, and, and this is like an estimated statistic, but I would say that men and women over the age of 40, it's 70% are either obese or insulin resistant or inflamed or all of the above. And so I think you and I, because again, we were talking off air, we know how bad it is from a life perspective standpoint when you're obese, when you're insulin resistant, when you're inflamed. I mean, it's 24 seven aggravate, agor agonizing pain, cytokine storms, suffering, what is, why is it that so many adults have allowed themselves through lifestyle habits to get there? It's a great question. And to be honest, Jay, it's a bit of a Pandora's box of a question, because I think when it comes to habit formation, I love the line. I think it's attributed to Seneca, the, the old Roman philosopher, that the chains of habits are too loose to be felt until they're too strong to be broken. And that can happen a lot with lifestyle, whether that's nutrition, lack of movement, like you mentioned, uh, not having awareness around your endocrine disruptors. That was a big one for me. I was yeah. 25, 26 before I even came across the term endocrine disruptor. And I switched yeah. out the products I was using in my hair, the yeah. deodorant, all these little things that Anything. add up as you do them over time and keep an eye on them over time. I really think there's an element of people not knowing that there's a multitude of different ways to get yourself into really good shape, whether it is looking at your nutrition, looking at your sleep, balancing out your hormones. I know you do a lot of work with peptides um, and hormone imbalancing. Like that's key. If you have a struggle and an issue that needs further support than just nutritional change, you probably need to look into that. You need to potentially have assistance from some of the peptides that are out there. Again, I've only recently gone down that route more so with BPC-57, TB-500, the anti-inflammatory and injury uh, specific peptides based on a couple of things that happened to me playing sport. And I would say for those 70% of people, you look at your food first, because I think everything comes down to the foundation. And we, I know you've yes. done this, I've done this, and I feel like I've bet it to death when it comes to <laughs> look at your food, whether whatever deciding factors you go with, you know, cook quality food as much as possible, minimize processed ingredients. It's just it's not rocket science, but still a lot of people struggle with it. Then you get into your microbiome, the uh, inflammatory responses, the addictive behavior, the emotional response to food. A lot of people who fall oh, yeah. in that overweight and obese category that I've worked with in the past, there's an emotional response. A lot of people have and confuse even emotional hunger and physical hunger. Like I get people to do a check-in that, you know, below the neck and a uh, physical sensation in your stomach is normally physical hunger, a fast, quick and above the neck is normally emotional hunger. It's just a quick check-in right. for people. And when someone that's gone 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight, they'll find that actually they're eating a lot of the time out of emotion and not out of physical totally. hunger. And then you're coming down to your food choices, the fiber, the nutrient density in the food. So it's a very nuanced question and a bit of a Pandora's box. I'm curious, what do you think? If you were to pinpoint, Jay, one thing, and I know, again, this is your podcast, so I'm just curious because it's hard to pick one thing. What's the, the low-hanging fruit or... What I would say is the pyramid of prioritization, the thing at the bottom of the pyramid upon which everything else is built that you think people are struggling in terms of the weight loss and fat loss and why we have this 70% obesity epidemic in the majority, most parts of the Western world in particular. I love how you literally just completely turned it all around. First off, you gave me an amazing answer, multiple answers, and then inverted it and turned it around perfectly as I asked it, that your brain is also rocking right now. Um, I'm happy to answer it. I mean, there's two things. Um, you said it best, and I'll even give uh, correlations. I mean, the overall lowest hanging fruit is eating actual God created food. Style from Mind Pump, you know, came on my podcast. I'm really good friends with the Mind Pump guys. If you want, man, I would love for you. I think that they should take, you should go on their show. I think you would be amazing on their show. And I'll oh, connect you with yeah. Love yeah. To do. Amazing. yeah. I'd love to do that. Thank I'd you. love to do that with you. They're, they've got, you know, five, four or five million downloads a month. But, um, so when he came on my show, we talked about the same question. You know, we talked about the hyper palatability of foods, right? Like the GMO companies, the big box food companies and the fast food companies pay 
massively high dollars to people that come out of the Ivy League schools who are food scientists to develop all of these chemical agents that, you know, again, create addictive uh, feel, looks, tastes, smells, all the stuff that they then put on the foods, right? So emotional is a huge qualitative thing because I'll give you an example um, of what my wife talks about. So my wife is, um, she has, her mom was Mexican, you know, and so she has 50% Mexican ancestry. And in the Mexican culture, which by the way, my wife and I are both citizens of Mexico. We lived in Mexico for a long time, but uh, the food is celebrated as like a cultural moray. And when you're together in family functions, you eat like shit. I mean, they literally, the Mexican diet, I mean, 80% of people over the age of 25 in Mexico have type 2 diabetes or are close to get type 2 diabetes. And again, it's because they eat like horrible food. I mean, Mexico is the, actually the number one place in the, in the world right now for quality of food because they have no GMO and they have no spraying in the skies like they do in the UK and the United States, right? So they don't have the chemicals. They don't have all the stuff that's in our food, but they still eat too high of sugar too high of saturated fat in the combination, right? So that's a huge thing. And a lot of families, especially in the West now, because obviously we have uh, multiculturalism, it's a big thing to eat when you get around the family and you, and you have no concern for eating healthy. And obviously they also will be insulted and, you know, denigrated or just looked down on if they don't choose to eat when they're with the family, whether it's a funeral, you know, a holiday, uh, a get together with the weekend for grandma or grandpa or cousins, uncles, nieces, uncles, whatever it is, like people are brooded into eating around the family. And again, bro, the family meals in multicultural families is crazy. You know, it's been handed down and answers. So, so the answer is the hyper palatability of shitty food, of box food stuffs is making people addicted to eating those. Uh, and then obviously the, like you said, the emotional component of being around family is also the secondary component, but style, the mind pump guys did this experiment and they did this like a year ago, it was either a year or a year and a half ago, but they basically told every one of their listeners, they said, look, if you can go 30 days without eating anything other than, you know, this list of protein, this list of carbohydrates and this list of fat, watch what happens. And, and, and well, not only that, it was unlimited amounts of these types of foods. And they were, again, all God made foods, all created, you know, abundant foods from this earth Gaia and what will happen. And I think they had 50 or 60 people that went through their deal that did it. And every single one of them lost an average of 12 to 15 pounds in the month. And they did not, did not eat at a caloric deficit. So again, it really does come down to shitty food and the emotional based component, which is again, intimidation from families and get togethers and all this kind of stuff. But obviously that also that component of the hyper palatability of boxed and engineered food is also part of that. So it's twofold. So the answer is twofold. It's like people are eating shit and they're eating emotionally because they're brooded into family get togethers and stuff like that to eat like that all the time. And then they can't, like you were saying, they can't change the wiring when it's like that four or five times a week. And so when they're by themselves at their house, it's like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to have to eat like that tomorrow or later tonight or whatever. So I'll eat this when I eat now too. Oh, that's so beautifully said, Jay. And it's so interesting because I lived in the States for a while. I lived in the UK and London for years and now I'm settled close to the West of Ireland where I grew up originally. And anywhere I go in the Western world, the answer is what you said there. Eat food that came from the planet. That's God-given food. And it's got inbuilt satiety. The fiber is going to be higher. The micronutrients are going to be higher. You're going to get everything your body needs. And rarely will people go, well, there has to be something else. Like right. it, it has to be a supplement, surely. Or it has to be a diet plan of some sort. Or it has to be something. It's like, it, it's not. It's unsexy. Totally but true. It's, but it's the truth. And it's the reality. And there's a, nearly a cognitive dissonance where people are disconnecting going, it can't be that simple. And again, I love what the mind pump guys did because it just shows eat real food, it, the inbuilt satiety effect, all the micronutrients you're going to need, very highly nutrient dense foods. You're going to feel fuller for longer between meals. You're going to feel energized. You're probably going to move more, sleep better, which will balance out your hormonal system. And then you have this positive compound effect going forward. It's crazy because like right now, my wife and I get foods from a company here that the preps and everything is, you know, a wild caught, organic, sustainable called nutrition solutions. The owner is a really good friend of mine. He's actually here in Florida where I live and he's 
blowing up now. He's probably the biggest um, meal prep. He's got Jocko Willig supporting him and stuff like that. So he's got a lot of people behind him. And his food is amazing. And the reason I bring him up is, and shout out to Chris Cavallini, is um, it's all wild carb. It's all sustainable. It's all clean carbohydrates. It's all nutrient dense and proportional in the meal. So it's like, yeah, it's still in plastic. And yeah, you know, people complain. Yeah, you still got to put it in the microwave or you could actually, we, we actually take it out of the plastic and we drop it in a, in a glass ceramic and put it in our air fryer, right? So I just cook it up in the air fryer. But the bottom line is, if you eat that food and you don't rummage through your pantry or your cabinets for shit, and obviously it's harder when we have younger kids, right? Because, you know, it's sometimes, as you know, as a parent, it's just getting them to eat anything rather than actually making them eat, you know, broccoli and chicken and you know wild caught fish but at the end of the day if you just eat that brian you will not overeat because you're right the human body the microbiome even with all of these levels of inflammation and these hyper palatable foods are all crap the human mi- microbiome will not overeat uh, abundant naturally created food it won't but it will overeat the shit that again is created for you to overeat I had a very interesting experiment that I did with one of my clients years ago who we were quite close and became friends because we've been working together for a while. But I was trying to prove this point to him because he didn't believe me. He flat out yeah. didn't believe me that and he had lost a load of weight. He was feeling really good. And I said, OK, we're going to do two experiments for an evening. We're not going to track your progress for the next two weeks because I want you to experiment with this. One day I said, get as many Pringles. You've got Pringles in the States as well. Uh, that they're, they're really popular here in Ireland and the UK. And I of said, get, get your Pringles. I said, you can eat as many of them as you want until you literally can't eat anymore. And I want you to track how many you ate. And he ended up going through like those big tubs. He ended up eating six of them. And wow. I, I was like, wow, that's amazing in terms of just, I feel I would be sick after one. I was borderline <laughs> impressed. But then I, I, gave, I gave him a three-day break. We went back to our normal eating regimen. And then I said, I want you to do the same thing with free range organic chicken. I want you to cook as many pieces of chicken and just eat until you can't eat anymore. And he was able to eat three. And I said, wow. okay, now look at the calorie difference between these two foods. I was like, you were there were three big chicken breasts. He was like, I was, he goes, I, I tried my fourth and I actually couldn't eat it. And I'm like, that's yeah. the palatability of food. That's the inbuilt satiety effect of protein for plant-based, anyone that's eating an omnivore or carnivore-based diet. Omnivore particularly is what we were doing with him. And the opposite side with the Pringles, which was close to, I think, 6,000 calories, maybe 6,500 calories, if I'm not mistaken. And it just showed. And he never questioned it after that. He goes, okay, I, I'm a believer now. He goes, I actually was able to eat the Pringles until I felt sick. And he goes, even when I felt sick, I still kept eating them. I got the chicken breast and I couldn't eat anymore. And I'm not saying for people to do that. This was somebody that I was literally monitoring, staying on top of, keeping an eye on. And he wanted to experiment with it himself. And it was a lesson he's taken with them long after. So it just demonstrates that from just two foods, Pringles and chicken breast, the difference that you're going to feel even in just the satiety alone. You, yeah, it's a great story. I mean, you could do the math, right? Like, I mean, again, bro, we're old school bros. So, I mean, like, you know, there's been Sundays where we prepped our fee- our meals and, you know, God did all that. I mean, every one of us has done that. But it's like, you know, in this world now of like, the, you know, the, the, the most successful or the most, you know, time restricted and controlled and obviously guard their, uh, you know, wall, have walls and stuff like that. I mean, like, why would you spend three hours you know, on a Sunday when there are companies out there, you know, Nutrition Dilution just one. I'm sure there's companies everywhere, Ireland, the UK, the Eurozone, Canada, that can send you the most amazing meals, you know, because it's, you know, people will say, oh, I can't afford that. It's like, what? You can't afford not to eat that way. You, you eat the shit that you're constantly shoveling in and you're going to shorten your lifestyle. Look, dude, we, we need to talk about this. Most people don't understand that, the event that will happen from not taking care of yourself and being proactive, you know, and I like to call it to become the proactive scientist of your own health, you know, to do the things that you and I have done, you know, to insulate your uh, self from those shitty water, you know, put filters in your house, obviously, you know, get rid of like, you know, like you said, perfumes and dyes and deodorant and bad toothpaste and all these different things that are chemicals that are killing us. But like not doing that and having a cardiovascular event or a stroke or, you know, even type two diabetes, because that's the majority of what people get. I mean, bro, if you look at the numbers, medical bankruptcy is now a 67% statistic in the United States alone by the time you're 67 years old. 
60 plus percent of people face medical bankruptcy. So it's like, why would you say, oh, I can't afford, you know, $650 or $750 a month for, for meals to be delivered to me? You know, whatever the number is, right? I'm, obviously for you, it's pounds. But like, I, I don't even understand how people can even say it because they'll still come up with the money to, you know, to drink beer, you know, to have three glasses of wine, to, you know, to have a 12 pack of donuts or again, whatever hyper palatable shit, emotional based food that they like, you know, cause everybody's got something for me. It's gummy bears, bro. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, it, it was Ben and Jerry's for me. I, I'm, I'm an ice cream guy. I have full on portion control issues, systems or willpower. Just can't keep it in the house. <laughs> well, we went to a movie last night, right? And I don't go to movies, but you know, I had two business partners here. My daughters were like, yeah, we want to go see that movie. A quiet night, which was, by the way, terrifying. My God. So we went, you know, and I, and I had a bag of gummy bears. I'm not looking to lie. I mean, I eat clean 24 7, right? But I'm going to have a bag of gummy bears. But the point is, is that so many people look at it from a standpoint of like, I can't afford it. And I always say, you can't afford not to. There's a line that my grandmother used to always tell me, and I never forgot it because she was a very healthy woman until she passed in her 80s. That the crown, the health is the crown, the well aware that only the sick can see. And That's right. with fitness, as you know, if people don't make time for their physical health now, they have to make time for physical illness later. That's and exactly right. If, I'm probably giving us an unintentional segue here because I've been thinking about this a lot because something I suffered very heavily within my 20s particularly was anxiety. And when I started to do therapy, reflection journaling, and then down the line of plant-based medicines, and I saw that that internal peace was actually my default zone and the anxiety was something that I acquired along the way. I was like, right. oh, this is how I'm supposed to feel. Something I've been thinking about was physical health with people that are overweight and obese and they come up with things like, I can't afford to have a healthy meal prep company. Sometimes it's a case that they don't know how they're supposed to feel and sure. feeling good becomes addictive. And when you have an exercise regimen where you're moving more, you're eating quality foods and you start to see how you should physically feel or feel how you should physically feel in terms of vitality and energy levels. You have that now as a new reference base point. That's something that's been coming up a lot in my space recently because I used to be a very highly anxious person where I don't have that now. I meditate every day and I'm able to, you know, bring back a lot of the plant-based medicines in terms of that internal peace into your heart, into your mind and just lining up that entire consciousness so that I'm not in this Brian Keane, ego, anxiety state. And I realized that I'm just a, you know, a, an experience having a man instead of a man having an experience. And that is something that I think ties into physical health as well. That sometimes you need to get the ball rolling, go from zero to one, start to feel better. And then your values change alongside it. And then people can prioritize investing in a coach or getting a meal prep company or getting those as uh, uh, deodorant sprays that cost considerably more because there's nothing yep. in them in terms of the chemicals, et cetera. So I think that's an important thing because I've been thinking about that a lot myself recently. So, so, so let's unpack that and we can go, you know, there's maybe one more question about self-sabotage with food. We kind of already covered it. I, you know, I wanted to just bring it up with you and then we can just get deep on the spiritual path, but dude, a hundred percent. In fact, I will go deeper with you and I will say that anxiety comes from a lack of love and trust of self and a lack of love and trust of self is what every person on this planet's default state is when we come out of the womb, because we're brainwashed in every capacity. It doesn't matter what it is, right? Like I could tell you it's religion, politics, uh, you know, you know, food choices, uh, clothing choices. I mean, literally we come out and our parents inculcate us mm -hmm. and whatever our parents were a part of, they were inculcated by their parents and their parents before and their parents before us. And so, the, the, you know, again, I, I like, you know, you use Seneca, it's great. I like Walter Russell, you know, he's got the quote that says basically the path is out of the womb to the base of the jungle, back to the top of the mountain. And if you really think of that, it's the path from dark to light and dark to light is waking up to the idea that you're not your body, right? That you are consciousness itself. And when you are aware that you are consciousness itself, again, you can change your state with a thought. And so it's like, if you're, if you know, you're not your body, because again, we're talking about people that are like anxious, obese, overweight, sick, resistant, insulin resistant, whatever. And they say to themselves, okay, I'm not this body anymore. I'm consciousness. 
I'm now going to change. And you don't even say going, it says I am change. And you then take effort, take action, start doing initiatives, blah, blah. And as you know, you got to take action, but you can change your state. But I think so many people, you know, dude, like, let's talk about anxiousness, right? Because now anxiousness is people who vape. Mm -hmm. You can't go anywhere in the United States and not look to your left or right in five minutes if you're in public and see somebody who's like, Ireland's the same. It's exactly the same here. Oh, it is the most insane thing. My wife and I are noticing this. Like when we go out in public, we want to just like look at all the people who are so anxiety riddled and not to criticize, not to condemn, not to judge. It is what it is. But it's like, these are all people who do not do any internal work, right? There's no introspection. There's no contemplation. There's no gratitude journaling. There's no waking up early in the morning and sitting in nature. I mean, these people are so overwhelmed because of this and because of like what, you know, comparison again, you know, social media, that they literally have to destroy their physical vessel. Because what is worse than vaping? I mean, there's studies, you know, I know it's preaching to the choir, but there's all sorts of stuff coming up about vaping now. You know, people are literally saying it's worse than smoking cigarettes. Wrong. It's mm -hmm. worse. I mean, it's insane, but this is all due to a lack of internal work. And if you go deeper, it's a lack of love and trust of self because they, as you said, you said it earlier, they don't feel worthy of being better. They don't feel worthy of having a better body. They don't feel worthy of changing and not doing literally stuff that is detrimental to their, to their life, to, to their existence. I'm very curious to hear your perspective on this because I've thought a lot on it, whether it's a chicken or egg scenario, because we spoke right before we went on air that, you know, I'm a believer that our path is laid out. We probably have soul contracts made. We were supposed to have 100%. this conversation and it's just, it's just manifesting now in the physical 3D world. And, but something I've been thinking about a lot is the physical foundation. And we talked about our journeys and paths that we have that, yeah. you know, physical fitness, it's, it's spirituality wrapped in muscle. So it's a bit of a troll no. course when it comes to talking to people. Love that. But, but part, wrapped in yeah. But Love par that. part of the reason I was able to go on a spiritual path was my physical health was looked after. And we were speaking right before we went on air that if you're clinically overweight or obese, you're walking around normally in pain, whether you know it or not, because you're moving around a lot of extra weight. It's a default state, state, Ryan. Default it becomes state. default state. But you don't want to, or I can only speak for myself. I feel it's very difficult to want to spiritually level up when your physical vesicle and your vehicle isn't where it needs to be. Bro, I would say it's impossible. That's what I was going to ask you uh, in terms of a chicken or an egg. Because there is the mindset and the thought process that if we go on a spiritual journey and start to look at our self-trust, our self-love, our self-worthiness and start connecting to source and whatever that looks like for you in your own life, whether it's universe, God yeah. or some other language that you want to put in. I think it's very subjective. We're all arguing about the same thing, just wrapped in huh. different language, uh, which is amazing to me that we're still doing this in 2024. And it's probably only getting amplified and worse because of social media, the way that people are. But the, I think looking after their physical health first and then going down the spirituality path because i was going to ask if you thought you could go spirituality and then it works in reverse chicken or egg meaning that you go down this whether it's plant medicine or you don't even have to go extreme in plant medicine i think you can gratitude journaling therapy reflection right. nature bathing things along those lines all have such a positive impact on our body and our energy and our frequency that doing that can sometimes go well this is the only vehicle i'm getting your body is basically your vehicle that you're moving through this world on if i said to you Jay, you only get one car for the rest of your life. You would look after that fucking car because it's the only one that has to get you around for the rest of your life, for the next 20 years, 30 years, 40 years beyond, you would look after it. But sometimes people don't think, well, actually my physical body is my vehicle for this earth. I need to look after it. And then the spirituality, I think, goes in hand in hand. But I think you've answered the question on the chicken or egg just from what you said there. Well, I mean, I mean, but, but, but the, I mean, it's beautiful and dude, you said so many good things. I mean, I mean, it's, so what really is, is a lack of conscious awareness mm -hmm. and the conscious awareness can only come from doing the work. So whether it's doing the work on the physical vessel, it's doing the work on the internal vessel, you know, this, let's just call it mind, body, soul. Mm -hmm. When you do the work on all three, the higher self makes itself known to you or you connect with your higher self, right? You said, you know, you said consciousness, source, creator of all, 
uh, the universe, whatever, you know, the energy and frequency of everything and no thing, right? So like when you're connected to it, it's guiding you. And so now you are not doing the things that somebody who isn't connected to that, which is again, someone who doesn't love and trust themselves. Because if you love and trust yourself, you're automatically connected to your higher self. I mean, I teach people in a lot of my stuff that you can actually even ask your higher self if a thing that you're planning to do in your life is, at your highest, is in your highest and best interest, right? Because your higher self, you know, will have hairs on the back of your arm, you know, right here, they can be on the back of your neck. There's little subtle nuances that they give you or it will give you to say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling with you, my bro. You know what I mean? But like, you have to learn to tap into that and tune into that. And obviously the things that you and I have done uh, through getting, you know, very lean. I mean, that's another thing, right? Like one of my mentors, Gerald Clark, taught me that the human body was an antenna. And if you're going to tap into the highest seventh density frequency, you're not going to be able to, if you're obese and blamed and sick. I mean, I mean, if you're rolling around and, and here's another thing that's interesting, like from an etheric nature, like we know that visceral body fat is the most inflammatory substance. It's more inflammatory than kerosene, right? They've done all those Mr. Science experiments with, with visceral fat. You know, you put it in a, a bowl and then you watch it and you see what happens to it. It's just nasty. But why would the physical body with source being such a wonderful, you know, all things in omniscient force create visceral fat around the internal organs, knowing it was that inflammatory if it wasn't based on the reality that like you shouldn't do these things. This is the wake up call because visceral fat will literally eventually kill your physical body. It's going to lead to various disease states. So it's like, once I figured that out and I didn't figure it out, obviously it came to me through my experiences in life and everybody eventually, I shouldn't say everybody, but most people We'll have one or two things will happen. It'll be, it can go our way, which is like the physical fitness way. You get mastery of the physical body and then you're receptive to spiritual downloads or, and this is, I think, because most people don't have the work capacity to look like us and to, to train like we do to get to where we are. Uh, they have their dark night of the soul and the dark night of the soul can be anything, right? It can be a life ending experience. It could be a, you know, a husband or wife kill themselves or lose a child or something that literally connects them with their higher self. And, it, and it's like, you know, the AA people, my, my wife's dad, uh, who also has terminal cancer right now, you know, he's an amazing person, but he's almost done. But he will say, until a human being is sick and tired of being sick and tired, they're not going to change. Right. And, and that's a big mover for most people. So sometimes that will also bring the higher self in to answer the chicken or egg question. But it's always a level of like, have you gotten to the edge and peered into the abyss and realized that the abyss wasn't for you? And a lot of people, bro, they don't ever get there because they live in a box. They just live in a box their whole life. I mean, you look at the statistics. This is insane. I think it's 50% or 52% of humanity lives within a six square miles radius of where they're born and never leaves it. Never even leaves it. So how can you learn about the world and other cultures and people and things if you don't travel, if you don't experience life outside the box? So that's a whole other thing. But I mean, the chicken and egg question is, is 100%. It's becoming aware of your higher self and then allowing your higher self to lead you, you know, through everything. And I, I think it just becomes a natural part of, your, of you, who you are and it, as your identity, you know, as a psycho-spiritual uh, being in third density when you're connected to your higher self. I agree. I think it becomes part of your new normal that you yeah. learn to identify that there's something else potentially guiding you in whatever language you want to put in it and that trusting and surrendering to that is actually, and again, I, I'm the first to put my hand up. I'm a believer in law of attraction, power of perception, 100%. all of that. But you, there is an element of action that needs to go with it. Like law of attraction without action is a distraction. People, you can't sit on your couch and eat Doritos and expect to lose the weight. You just can't. It's not going to happen. You can't be sitting out in your living room or sitting outside in your front porch and be like, I can't wait till my love of my life comes into my life or that business venture comes. You have to take action with it. And I think a misconception, and I can, and I'm only speaking firsthand experience, there's definitely better sure. people out there and spiritual teachers who will speak more eloquently on this than I can. But what the higher self doesn't tune into that is it, it clears the path. It's like going through a jungle with a machete ahead of you. 
And you're like, okay, this is the path I'm supposed to walk. This is what I'm supposed to do in my work and how I serve people. These are the people I'm supposed to spend my time around, the energy givers versus the emotional vampires and the people who will suck the energy from you. And you start tuning into that, similar to what you mentioned there about the antenna. I always think of it like a radio signal. In the beginning, you can kind of hear the muffle, but it's not very clear. But the more you meditate, the more you journal, the more you check in with things, and the more you get better with that intuitive voice and that intuition that's inside you, whether it's something spirit inside that's guiding you, you start to get clearer on things and you learn that this isn't somebody I should be around or this isn't work I should be doing or this is out of alignment with my higher self. And that's very difficult. It's like lifting weights in the gym. First time you ever squatted, it was probably the bar and it felt really uncomfortable and your knees are buckling underneath you. And after (laughs) after 10 years, you know, you're squatting a couple of hundred pounds and your form is perfect. Spirituality is very similar. I think there's crossover with fitness and spirituality. Everything is difficult in the beginning. I had Robin Sharma on my podcast. He wrote The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari amongst a few other really good books. And he nice. talks about change being difficult in the beginning, beginning, messy in the middle, and beautiful at the end. And fitness right. is like that. Business is like that. And I think spirituality is like that as well. I love all that. I want to add one thing to what you said because it makes it easier for, I think, for people to understand. I mean, not that you're not very clear in your thoughts and your words, but um, action is everything. And the new age community has, has brainwashed. And I know you know this because you talked about, you, you said all the magic words with the law of attraction, but it's brainwashed the people in the quote unquote new age community to think that they can just manifest their reality and change it without taking action. And let me tell you this. It is possible to change your reality without taking action, but the universe, which is the most coherent force in existence, is not going to go against truth. So if you're sitting in dissonance and incoherence, like you said, eating Doritos, pounding down vodka sodas, like if you somehow were able to change reality, you would create nothing but chaos and complete incoherence. And so it would be just like a tsunami of just, darkness. I mean, it would be everyone around you that would be involved in that chaos of creation would be, you know, affected negatively. So it's like, you know, you can under, people can understand that like the universe is not going to bend to your will unless you're living in truth and you can't be living in truth by being 450 pounds, you know, reading wall of attraction books or the secret or whatever, and thinking that you're just going to like, you know, use your power of your will because there are people out there that actually, you know, really do have very strong wills. And then, you know, we can really go down the rabbit hole and start talking about white magic versus dark magic because that exists too. But it's like you are not going to bend the universe to your will if you're not living within the confines of truth in the universe. The metaphor, and that's so well said, I'm going to try and add on to that slightly if I can, Jim. Sure. The metaphor or a figurative visualization that helps me a lot when it comes to the universe moving around me and my physical actions and the choices that I need to make is like chess pieces on a chessboard. I always think of it like moving one piece. I get to move one piece. I get to take a piece of action with something that I'm doing and then the universe moves around me. And then when that shifts, I get to move again. I think that visualization helps a lot because it merges the best of both things. It's okay, you're moving in alignment. Hopefully, if you're in alignment with your truest self and what you should be doing, and that's so relative from the people you should be around to the work oh, totally. you should be doing to your physical wellness, but taking the action step and then trusting that the universe will conspire around you, I think that's a very freeing philosophy and thought process. And somebody that has had a whole history of mental health issues from anxiety that I mentioned and depression in my younger life, that gives me a lot of peace, peace from mind, peace of heart. And I think for those who are similar with that type A, go, 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 force things to happen, which is actually very serving up to a point until it's not when you're just this anxiety riddled mess. And then you realize that actually this, you know, every, is this juice worth the squeeze? It's actually taking too much energy from me and it's making me more anxious and more miserable. Although I have all these external successes, I actually just want to feel some fucking peace. And then when you're able to merge those two things, that's where the real magic is, in my opinion. Amazing, bro. I mean, we're so like, you got to bring it on your podcast so we can even- 100%, I was, yeah, 100%. I was thinking the same thing. We'll organize well, that after this. I mean, we're the same person. I mean, we're definitely from the same soul family. I mean, I, I would just tell you that uh, everything you said is so resonating with me because I feel the exact same way. I mean, it's interesting because people, so I always tell people like, you know, when you get to deep in with someone, you ask them, you know, because it's always like a question, like, what is your purpose? You know, and most people will be like, well, the purpose is to be a good father or a good husband. You know, or like to do this or to lead my company or to be this visionary entrepreneur. And it's like, no, dude, 
Like when you truly are in alignment, your alignment is knowing that you're here to evolve and grow your soul. Like earth is a school and we are here in a density of earth-based existence or earth-based reality. And there are higher levels to this game. And our goal as a soul in this level is to graduate, right? So I always tell people, you're not going to graduate if you don't go through adversity. And the most contrast produces the greatest growth. So again, it goes back to like, if you're not willing to put yourself out there, you're not willing to travel, you're not willing to experience life, you're not willing to change. You know, think about change. It's the only inevitable, unavoidable reality of living in third density. And literally 90% of people are resistant to change. So think about that dichotomy and, you know, that transverse. I mean, it's like, it's insane to think that so many people refuse to change, refuse to travel, refuse to move. Because again, it's so uncomfortable for them. But again, if you know that your purpose is as a soul to evolve, you want as much contrast and uncomfortability as you can. Hey, bring me more, right? And then you learn, right? You're like, nothing is anything ever than an opportunity for growth. You know, a divorce, a loss of a loved one, uh, a bad breakup, you know, a business collapse, a, you know, a bankruptcy, all of those things, if you look at them as like, wow, I want less of this, more of that, you know? And, and, and truly look at it from a perspective of like, I can grow from this. No, no, I know, dude, I don't want to sound, you know, kumbaya here and woo-woo, but like in the process of it happening, you know, you're going like this and it's unstable, whatever. But if you can just come from a place of like, okay, this is happening to me. I'm going to take deep breaths. I'm going to allow it. I'm going to accept it, but I'm going to move beyond it. Then, you know, the key, that's the real key. And again, dude, like, you know, we're older and we've gone through a lot. You know, you had anxiety. For me, it was like living in the ego mind. I mean, dude, people in my 30s literally called me, fuck you, pay me. I was such a good salesperson and so low conscious and so in the ego mind that that's what people called me. They were like, you're just a ruthless pirate. You know what I mean? And so it wasn't until I have my come to Jesus moments and my dark nights of the soul and my divorce and going to jail and all the things that I've happened to that I made the change and that I realized that I was a spiritual being and that I was here for a greater purpose than just to be whoever Jay Campbell thought he was as the ego of Jay Campbell. You know, but, you know, we all have this. I mean, again, all of us have this, but only some of us figure it out and, 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 and truly break through and learn that, again, our purpose as a soul being is to evolve. You know, and obviously, the, 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 I kind of want to leave out that we're not here to serve, right? Because you said that earlier very elegantly, and we're here to serve. And when you're serving unattached with zero expectation for anything in return, now you got to make money. We got to pay our bills. We live in third density, right? There are some things that we can't get out of. But at the same time, if you do it with just an open heart and again, unattached or expecting anything in return, that's how you evolve your soul. That to me is how you will ultimately graduate. I love that, Jay. And there's a line that I went through my dark night of the soul towards the back end of last year. It was a breakup for me. We were supposed to get married and it was kind of all but a divorce and it was just dark sure. night of the soul. But the line that when the caterpillar thought it was the end of the world, the butterfly knew it was just the beginning. And it sounds like that path. And sometimes people are in that caterpillar phase, caterpillar months, caterpillar season of life, caterpillar year, a difficult fucking year where just yeah. stuff is going wrong now good and bad is such a subjective term we see everything through our own lens and we tend to interpret whether that oh, thing is good or bad there's no way to know until enough time has passed until you literally get to look back on your life and go actually that ended up working out so the things you didn't think were right for you at the time actually were exactly what you needed to be and where you needed to be in that moment but we don't have that in hindsight or we don't have that in in the current stage we only get that in hindsight and it's so beautifully said. Like I, I can't remember the line or who it's attributed to that, you know, bad storms make for skilled sailors. And it sounds like that's what you've done with your life. It's what I try and do with my life. And I call people who are listening when they're going through difficult times to embrace it. Yes, yeah. it'll suck now. Yeah. It's really difficult. Death of loved ones, breakups, divorces, job losses, obesity, all these things are horrible to deal with. But they're possibly the season of life where you're a caterpillar right. that you that you know you're hurting you know it's difficult but it's leveling up and graduating your soul yes. to another point and sometimes that lens and that perspective is just enough to pull you out of that ego state and the woe was me and the victim mentality that we can get stuck in and allow you to get back on path in alignment with what you should be doing it's beautiful um 
I'll, I'll just say this, you know, and then we'll talk a little bit about plant medicine and then we'll continue our conversation on your podcast. 100%. So we'll uh, round two. Talking. Yeah, exactly. I love that. That'd be we'll dead. We'll right back. But uh, to what you just said, um, Dr. Hawkins has an amazing line that I actually amended. And his statement was, everything is happening divinely as is intended. And I said, everything is happening divinely as is intended always and in all ways. And our resistance to that awareness is futile. So if you come from that place, even in the midst of shit, and bro, let's be honest, even me and you will have days where everything goes to shit and you, the ego default, the, 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 the ego will literally take you like, why is this happening to me? It just does. And again, the ego is a very necessary part of our, our, you know, idea, you know, it keeps us alive, right? If we're walking down the street, a car comes flying around the corner, and you know, it's like, what? I'm like, yeah, you don't but want to be like, float, floating through on an ayahuasca trip connected to source in the middle of a fucking motorway. <laughs> so, I mean, like, yeah, so, like, the, but the truth is, it's like, it's harnessing the ego. You know, Ryan, uh, whatever his name is, said the ego is the enemy. Ego is not the enemy. It's harnessing the ego. It's controlling the ego and understanding that you are in power and that you are in charge of manager, being, managing your energy field. And the ego is just doing what it's supposed to do. It's designed to do, which is to keep you alive in a third di- third density physical body. But it's it really is true that if you think of your life, no matter what is happening to you, that everything is happening divinely as it's intended, always and always. You come from that place of awareness, dude, nothing will get you down because you will know that everything that's happening, even if it's the worst fucking shit storm, right now for you in that moment in time for your family, your wife, your kids, whatever, your job, whoever, it, you'll be like, you know what? It's going to pass. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up and the sun is probably going to come up. Not in Ireland, bro. No. But here in Florida. <laughs> yeah, July. We're good in July. I think it's the only month we do get sun. I always say that because my, 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 one of my good friends, Daniel Kelly, lives there. We always talk shit at each other. But uh, no, but it's true, man. Like if you come from that place of like, you know what? This is just a moment in time. And that's all that there is in third density. And outside of third density, there isn't time, right? Like everything is from a place of neutral observation. But you're like, you know what? Who cares? It's it's just, I got it. This is a part. Like you said, it's a contract. I already agreed to this. This is my experience. And the the, the way I look at it now, dude, is the what it's really bad. And again, that's a definition or a label. But if, if it's really bad in the moment, I know that I will come out of it even more of all. Because it's the greatest opportunity. The, the greater the contrast, the greater the growth. I couldn't agree more. I think that's, I've literally nothing I could add to that, Jay. I think sometimes when we're going through that difficult period, it's very difficult to see the blessing or the lesson in the moment. But right. when enough shit happens and you realize that you always, it's such a cliche, it's the Nietzsche, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. But when it comes to spirituality, it's very true. And sitting with that just in the moments of difficulty, and I'm not saying those things aren't horrible. You wouldn't wish them on your worst enemy. Right. Divorce, death of a loved one, uh, death of a child, anything like that. They're horrible experiences for anyone in this 3D world to have to go through. And I'm not undermining it in any stretch, way, or form. But knowing that everything happens for a reason, another cliche I know, but literally sitting in with that in the difficult times because the yeah. hardest the hardest thing I ever found and I don't know if you're the same Jay is when shit hits the fan it's catching that and going this is for my greater good that's exactly. really hard to do when you're in the middle of it yeah. but sometimes it's what you need to do for yourself it's the gift that your future self comes back and gives your present self and that is something that I think is very important to pull into your repertoire or into your toolkit for when you are going through difficult times. I agree hundred percent. And I will tell you that luckily for me, my wife will balance it. Mm. She'll be like, what are you doing? Literally she'll come from like the spiritual master, but you know, the Yoda position and she'll be like, that's why I always have Yoda in the background. I'm like, what, what, what are you doing? And I'll be like, you know, and she'll be like, what are you doing? And then it'll be like, Okay, fuck, you're right, you know, and 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 then you know, but I mean, it, yeah, dude, it's it, it, you, it, it's almost like having an internal guiding warning system because you're right when you're turned upside down and the ego takes over, and again, like you said, when you're in the middle of the fire, you're going to react with the ego, and it it, it, it yes, you as a person can you know 
come from a place of higher authority, you know, or neutral observation. But like you said, it's a lot harder to do it right away because you've got everything flipping you upside down. And so like, I'm really blessed that my wife is my spiritual mentor and she will literally say that to me. And she'll say it in a very low but stern way of like, well, I'm wanting to rage, you know, against the machine. She, she's literally like, what are you doing? This is not Jay Campbell, the master. What are you doing? And then I'll be like, I mean, it, it usually will take three or four times with her. And then sometimes I'll just have to walk outside and sit in nature. You know what I mean? But I mean, it, it, it really, what you said is profound because we all need that warning or early warning guidance system. You know, somebody, sometimes, you know, obviously when we're really in tuned and untuned, we can, it'll just turn off. You know what I mean? But like when you're, when, like you said, bro, when you're really, and you know, and guys like us, you know, type A, successful, accountable people, like we will go ego and, and rage because like we're so accountable. Mm. We're so personally responsible that we won't think about help. We won't seek help immediately. But as you know, you know, help is always there. But sometimes it just, and again, I, I give credit to my wife, you know, my daughter, who literally just hilariously enough, just came into my room because she was telling me she's going to her friends. She's 16 years old. She dry, That's the one that dipstick the oil. She just came in to say, hey. Oh, I love that. But, but I was thinking about her. She's like the next one where she's done stuff too. Because I've been in public with her and we've had some really weird, crazy shit happen just as you do too. I mean, you know, being in public these days down probably with fucking people mm -hmm. is like, whoa, that's a whole other podcast. We'll talk about that on our show. But like, you got to be really managing your energy field when you're in public right now, right? Because I mean, like people are not of the highest vibration, especially in herds. But I mean, she's said things to me. She's like, yeah, why would you think that? Or why would you, why would you react like that? You know? So it's good to have your, your nine-year-old daughter, my 16-year-old daughter, your wife, a loved one around you to, again, be an early warning system to, to teach you or to, to just to speak to you and, you know, and from a recognition of like, this is not you. They're mirrors. I think the people that totally. are closest to us are, are mirrors back to us in terms of what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing. And it's interesting 100%. because I think if you observe, and I think I've learned, it's so funny because they say that kids learn from their parents, but I think my daughter's taught me more than I've taught her at this stage because I can see from her reactions. Now, I was also very blessed with one of my ayahuasca trips that we can potentially get onto this. And I know we'll have to wrap soon. But Let's I, talk about it right now, for I, sure. I got to experience ayahuasca shot, which sounds mental for anyone who's not familiar with plant-based medicine, but I'm sure your audience are very familiar. But the experience was very intense for me, where it shot me into my daughter's body and allowed me to experience my time with her as her and the things that make her feel seen, make her feel loved, make her feel heard. And... I was a completely different person when I came back and now I'm attuned Amazing. to her reactions and they're mirrors to me. When I'm on the laptop or the phone, she switches off and becomes a different person. When I'm nowhere near technology and I'm focused on her, her energy is completely different towards me. And they're things that possibly were going on before that I just didn't have any conscious awareness around. And now it's literally like somebody sending off a vibration or a warning bell in my brain going, what the fuck are you doing? Put your laptop away. Put your phone away. Like, right. be with your child here. Be in the moment. Be in this present. And that is a, an amazing gift that I got. And again, it's not to suggest, and I don't think everyone should do plant-based medicines. I've done one, everything from cambo and mushrooms to ayahuasca and the toad. And they're not for everybody. They can potentially cause more problems for people, depending on the front-end work that you've done. But if you're in a place where you can accept the frequency and the downloads and the messages that you're being given, they can change your life. And that was just one experience amongst many that I'm extremely grateful for that still reaps dividends to this day. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I'll save my, my downloads and my thoughts for our next one because we're almost at 60 minutes and I don't want my, this has been such a profound podcast. I don't want it to go that much longer where people are like, oh, dude, you know. Leave them wanting more. Check into the, the round two on my podcast. We will, there'll be a part right. one and part two. <laughs> exactly, man. Well, dude, honestly, let me put your stuff up here. This has been such an amazing podcast. Uh, I mean, I have a lot to say on plant medicine. I, I, I'm pretty much in total agreement with you. I, you know, I will definitely say that um, the, the plant slash the toad, any entheogen is an amplifier, right? So where you are consciously is what you're going to get back. Hmm. And that happens all the time. And so like, that's not a judgment or a condemnation of anyone, but like, if you're not working on your state of vibration or your state of consciousness, and you go down those paths, B, 
be prepared to receive exactly what you need, not what you desire, what you need. You know what I mean? And I hate using the word need. It's really re requires a better word. Um, but, the, but, but the truth is, is that that's what the plant does, or that's what the toad, or that's what, you know, any indigent will do is like, give you exactly what you're, you know, looking to do or to grow, to evolve as a soul. You and, know? and it can be extremely difficult. The Carl Jungian quote is, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a man for a quote. I think if I had a superpower, it wouldn't be super strength or speed. It'd be my ability to retain a fecking quote. But Carl Jung's, your plants or your roots need to go down to hell or to hell for your branches to reach up to heaven is a That's very right. useful brain tattoo going into any plant-based totally. medicine because particularly ayahuasca because she's the mother, but she's the dark mother. Yeah. And it is like going a hundred rounds with Mike Tyson on a bad experience yeah. it can be beautiful yeah. as well and again yeah. contrast is what makes the experience but just proceed with caution because i'm always aware when i say on a podcast or anything publicly and it can paint yeah. it like it's all sh sunshine and rainbows and people are like oh right. i want to go do plant medicine no, 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 it's no, all no. my problems just proceed with caution yeah no 100 percent. i mean i just you know did my vip mastermind and six people did cambo before they did the meo um it was Amazing. And, and, you know, it's true. This is the truth. You know, this is not woo. I mean, you know, you speak to any very advanced, uh, regression hypnosis therapist, you know, board certified, you know, to people that just work with disassociated personalities and stuff like that. But they say that the average person can have four attachments at any given time. Right. And that's totally relative to your vibration. Yeah. Right. So you keep your vibration up here in the fields of acceptance, reasonable understanding and forgiveness. It's unlikely that you're going to get a lower vibration being to attach to you. You might get a higher vibration being to certain, you know, to be sitting on the side of you, giving you great info and feedback to teach you to evolve. But that's what you, that you dude, I'm glad you said that because I do get upset with people in the new age community and the people that are talking about plant medicines being like the opiate, right? Like it, it fixes everyone. It's the greatest thing. No. It absolutely does it, you know, and you as an individual and your vibratory level is going to deserve, you're going to get what you deserve. Literally, you're going to get what you deserve. And again, it, you, you can use that if you're vibrating at a lower frequency and you get a negative experience, you can absolutely use that to evolve, right? But as you know, a lot of people don't and they receive it and they go sideways. I mean, I, dude, I'm true story. I have a guy, friend who never recovered from an ayahuasca ceremony, literally never recovered. He's 45 or 46 years old now. And he's shit. Last time I heard from a friend of mine, he said he was homeless. Yeah. You know, and he was a very successful engineer. No, and it wasn't married, but you know, really good looking, very fit, you know, had it all, you know, all yeah. and did that and, and went south and literally never recovered. I mean, I could even say he probably had part of his psyche fractured. I can see how you know, that. One hundred percent. See how it could happen. One hundred percent, it does. Yeah, and people, you know, people don't want to talk about that part. You know, obviously, I understand shamans. You know, don't ever get into judgment or condemnation, and they don't really ever talk about people's experience or what they see. But like, if you really get really good friends with shamanic people or or you know a very high level shaman, you know, and they're in their privates with you and they trust you, they'll tell you some crazy shit. You know, because they've seen it all. Yeah. You know, um, but again, they come from a, uh, you know, a line of, if you want to call it a priesthood or an initiate academy where there's just no judgment or condemnation and everything is energy. Yeah. So they're never going to say, oh yeah, you know, I, this guy had three demons in him. Right. So like, I mean, you've been in circles, bro. I mean, I literally have seen demonic attachments. Yeah. Like I've seen them in the person under the influence of the plant or under the influence of the toad and, and literally watch them fight it you know, as it tried to prevent them from going into the source field. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's in, all part for, of it. for those who haven't experienced it, it sounds insane. But when you let go of the attachment to this one single reality and understand that there's other vibrations and realities at different frequencies, totally. it makes it a lot more accessible for people to potentially visualize because you've seen it in TV shows and movies. It's just playing out in front of your eyes. And again, sometimes I was one of those people, all I see is all there is. And now I realize that it's just a tiny, you know, fish in water, not knowing that there's water around them, that you need to be just very mindful of that. There's so much going on we're unaware of. and just keep an open mind for these things because they can potentially transform your life. But that can be a negative thing, such as the case of your friend that you know, and just be mindful and proceed with caution with anything along these lines. It's crazy because what we see is a sliver of reality. Yeah. 
right? I mean, the unseen is the majority. Yeah. And especially when you really, and, and we'll end with this, but like, you know, I tell people until you, and, and, and obviously, as you know, plant medicine is the warp speed initiation into this, but until you understand that you are not the top of the food chain as a, as a person, as a human being, right? That there are literally different realities. And in those different realities, you have to realize that it's a hyper-dimensional existence that we live in. You know, people, you know, I think a lot of people can, can deal with this now and can understand this because of the multiverse in, in movies, right? Yeah. But what, like, again, whatever plant medicine you do, I mean, and you are zapped into a fractal field and then you're hearing the sound of creation, you know, the OM frequency, the OM frequency, whatever it is. And we, everybody has different definitions that you were saying for it. The sound of the universe, you're like, oh, shit. Like how I defined my life and third density as a human in a physical skin suit is gone and out the window and blown to fucking shit. And I know you know this too, but like most people's definition of religion is destroyed yeah. after their experience, right? Because now they know that source is not some dude in a white robe with a chalice looking down, judging us that we're sinners, right? So it's like, you know, there's so many things that these, you know, literally destructs. I mean, I would actually say disintegrates that if you're not ready for that, bro, it can, like I said, rupture, yeah. you know, everything up top and, and put you in a state where you can't really recover. Yeah. You know? Beautifully said. Jay, I look forward to round two on my show. I think we have a, a lot more to unpack on this. Well, absolutely amazing, man. So let me, uh, so Brian Keen Fitness, guys, I uh, just put it up there. I'll take it down, my bad. And then, of course, find him on IG. Bro, again, amazing show. Thank you so much for coming on. So guys and gals and all the amazing folks that watch the Jay Campbell podcast as always support the incredible people and souls that come on like Brian, uh, follow him on IG, check out his website and remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.